as Nigerian sovereignty becomes strengthened. Experts advocate for developmental federalism. Plus, security experts warns Nigeria not to succumb to negotiation with armed bandits. Viewers, a very good day and welcome to Thunder Blowers Television News. My name is Aisha Mustafa. A retired military intelligence officer, Colonel Hassan Stalabu, retired, has reaffirmed that under no circumstance Nigerians shall not accept reconciliation with suspected armed bandits and instead urge the Nigerian security outfits to rise to the occasion to fight the armed bandits' heads. The former army officer raised the perspective in a special interview. The former army officer raised the perspective in a special interview session with the Arise TV News. Correspondent has the details. The retired military officer Colonel Hassan Stalavo said Nigeria cannot afford to negotiate with the armed bandits because the nation has what it takes to crush them. He said it is only if a country fell to conduct its homework that it will resort to looking for ways to negotiate with criminals, noting that the Nigeria he knew cannot resort to surrendering its supremacy to criminal bandits. We cannot, and I repeat, we cannot negotiate with these guys. We've got what it takes to crush them off. You only begin to negotiate when you've not done your homework, when you've not put in all what you should put in place, in place. So when they have taken over your kids or your citizens and hold them ransom, there is nothing you can do. Any attempt at rescue operation, there will be high collateral damage. You will lose nearly half or over three quarters of them. And what you are compelled to start negotiating. Has a country with a strong defense force haven't actually equipped your inventory? My God, you go out there and crush the enemy. That is what I expect from Nigeria. We did this in Liberia. We did this in Sierra Leone. We did it in the... What is happening with us? He insisted that Nigeria is a country with strong defense and well-equipped inventory as such it shall rise up to the occasion to fight the bandits head on. He raised alarm that bandits have taken over the sovereignty of Nigeria and that the right forces in the country are watching, noting that he doubt if it was country called Nigeria that he knew long before. Is this Nigeria? Our sovereignty is threatened. Bandits have taken over this country. And we are watching. We are watching. For Christ's sake. We must save this country. This is the only land we have. Can someone tell the president that Nigeria is sinking? Parties to the ongoing suit instituted by Dr. Ibrahim Shehu and three others against the election of Dr. Dauda Lawal as the PDP gubernatorial candidate in Zamfara had closed their case and built to address the courts in weeks' time. Correspondent Anasana Anka reported that at the closing of the cross-examination of one of the plaintiffs, who doubled as the PDP gubernatorial aspirant, Abu Bakr Hafiz, Barista Ibrahim Ali, the counsel to the three plaintiffs, announced that he has no intention to call further witnesses and therefore formally announced the closure of his defense. At the continuation of trial in the case filed by Dr. Ibrahim Shehu, Malang Wadatoma Dawaki, and Hafiz Nahuchi, Two plenty of witnesses were cross-examined by the defense team on Sunday. One of them was Chibju Chinedu, who was among the seven-man electoral panel set up by the PDP national headquarters to conduct the gubernatorial primary election in Zamfara State. During his cross-examination, Mr. Jude confessed to have written a minority report challenging what he termed as irregularities in the conduct of the party primaries. He told the court that he left the venue of the party primaries even before the exercise was concluded because according to him the electoral panel was not ready to do the right thing. He spoke extensively on the issue of voter registration, accreditation, declaration of result, composition of membership of the panel as well as the visitation to the major stakeholders before the commencement of the exercise. Size. Another witness, Hafiz Abakar Nahuche, was also cross-examined by the defense team where issues related to validity of the candidature of Dr. Dauda Lawal and his declaration as the winner of the election were raised. Councils react to the issues raised by the plenty of witnesses during cross-examination. The truth is that he is a witness subpoenaed by the Honorable Court to come and tender a document, not to even come and testify. 
we were silent because all the questions that have been thrown to him will not go to any issue. He was hoping to come and tender a document. But the other council went extra mile. So that one does not go to any issue at all. Well, it's for the court to evaluate his evidence and the court to make a pronouncement on what the court thinks about his evidence. But um, we'll leave it to the court. I'm not going to judge that. I'm not the judge. The court will judge and evaluate his evidence. At the end of the cross examination, counsel to the plaintiffs and dependents informed the court that they have all closed their defense and expressed readiness to address the court in weeks' time. We are comfortable with the evidences we have laid before the court. That is why we have to close our case. There is no need for us to call any further witness to come and testify in this matter. Well, um, the, the, the court says uh, when we come tomorrow, we will give directives on that. I mean, we are hoping that if the court allows us, that we will be able to file our final address within seven days. We can. The law is very clear that um, there, there's a, there, there must be a difference. You need to know the difference between not calling evidence and not calling witness. We already have evidence on record. The evidence we got from the one examination is evidence which the court can use. So you need not call a witness, but you provided you called evidence. So we think we have enough evidence, and we don't think it's a gamble. We think the law supports our position. Meanwhile, before the commencement of the proceeding on Sunday, the Independent National Electoral Commission has sought the relief of the court to tender a report on the PDP primary election from the bar, a request which was not objected by the parties. The presiding judge, Dr. Aminu Bappa, had joined the city until Monday for him to deliver a ruling on the motion file demanding for the extension of time. A former commissioner for works in Kanuma, Azuma Gajit and Saramia, has advocated for institutionalization of developmental federalism as the best way to tackle the governance crisis rocking the country. Magaji, who stated this during one of the channel's TV show, insisted that what Nigeria needed at this material time is equitable restructuring. Corresponding as the details. The former commissioner who insisted that the current structure of Nigeria is not working insisted that the best way to fix Nigeria is to reverse to what he termed as developmental federalism. He said every region of Nigeria has a unique comparative economic potentials, which if strengthened will make Nigeria a wonderful nation every citizen will be proud of. I'm a northerner, I'm from Kano State. And I had been accused by colleagues and brothers in a very civil political discussion of dominating the polity, dominating the economy, and dominating the security. So I asked the question, if I dominate the polity, I have the president. Yes, I have the executive council and appointees that are constitutional, just like every other state. But what is my economic situation? And what is my security situation today? So the question is, is it working for me if I dominate somebody? It's not. The question is, look at all the indices of development. The North today is actually worse off. Security, education, prosperity, development. I don't know. What have you? The North is not very well positioned. In fact, other parts of the country that have been pushed off in opposition space have managed to organize themselves into a survival mode and come up with a credible economic and development model. So I will say to you that, look, I think this country needs to be reviewed, and I think need to be fairly and equitably structured. I've always advocated for what I call development federalism. Development federalism, in my view, is a consensus by the six regions and Abuja to create a development template over time and devolve power gradually to the regions and to the states. The truth of the matter is, we all need to go back to our states. If all the states are working, the federation will be working. Because development is not in isolation. Everywhere you go is either a local government or the state. So if you devolve power to the local government and to the states, and then create an economic investment template in the form of development federalism, which basically bring the potential of South-South to be an oil and gas hub in Africa. We will stop importing petroleum products. We will stop importing things that we should be exporting. And we will become net exporters of that product. The Southeast, we all know, are very ingenious people with technology, manufacturing, and trading. 
please let us invest heavily. Let us leverage on our resources to and raise the capital to invest heavily in manufacturing so that we don't import things from India. We don't import things from China. We import and we produce these things we need for agriculture and for our transportation and other industrial machinery in the East. It's doable. I've been to Newi. I've been to the industrial hub of Aba. I've seen what the East can do. We will be proud to say made in Aba, produced in Aba, made in Nigeria. And we will all be proud citizens. And the economy of the East will be a net contributor to the center. The same thing with the Southwest. Southwest dominantly is a manufacturing and marine economy. Singapore is exactly like that. And therefore, if we develop the marine economy, the ports and the manufacturing base of the Southwest, we will be net exporters of goods and services and service providers in marine. And therefore, the Southwest economy will become net contributor. If you take the three regions of the North, Central, East and West, and you take the three countries of Cambodia, Thailand and Vietnam, our economy is almost the same thing. So, and these countries are booming individually. If you invest today in these regions in agriculture, agro-processing and organized market with the standards for export, standards for feed in Africa, we're even lucky that the African continental free trade argument is in effect. We have the whole of African market to ourselves and the world. We will be one of the richest regional zones in Nigeria. The former commissioner who asserted that the amalgamation of Nigeria has almost failed insisted that the only way to save the country is for all the citizens to accept the basic indices of development and work toward initiating a new developmental model which is physically practicable. Now I am saying honestly the structure of this country is not working. I don't want to be accused even when I am suffering. I want my people to wake up and rise up and feel proud just like every other Nigerian will feel proud when that sense of ownership is created. We should review. After all, the amalgamation has expired and the constitution is to be reviewed by the National Assembly. So the question is, what is the process? Now there are three different dynamics going on. The first one is the National Assembly has set up a very, very credible committee reviewing the constitution. The question is, can they change Nigeria to a point where they can change them such that the structure can say, we don't want two bodies in the National Assembly. Can they do it? We want to save cost and have only one unicameral body. Can they do it? Sit down and say, how do we do this peacefully? We all love each other. We all are Nigerians. We all respect each other. At individual level, we all have friends across the whole country. And honestly, everybody wants to have a giant, functional, proud country called Nigeria in Africa. Speakers and for the State House of Assembly, Nasir Ma'azumadaria, has called on the chairman of the ad hoc and standing committees to ginger up and participate actively in their legislative duties. Speaker Magaria made the call at the commencement of an executive session to mark the beginning of the resumption from a three-week cellular recess on Thursday. Correspondent has the details. The speakers of the State House of Assembly, who welcome members of the State House of Assembly from the three-week salary recess, reminded them of the tax ahead and the need for them to speed up their participation in the legislative business. He also reminded them on the need to speed up their committee works so that they can deliver to the aspiration of the five million people of Zamfara State they are representing, while commending their effort for supporting legislative agenda. He assured that the House will continue to carry everybody along. On matters of legislative concern. He thanked the governor and the entire executive arms of government for their support and urged them to continue to maintain legislative executive relationship. He also thanked the public for their prayers and cooperation at all time. Previous with this, we have come to the end of today's news. On behalf of the production crew, I Aisha Mustafa Ismail is saying, Master.